My name is Michal Uziau uh, and I'm the head of the community center in Eshkol. Eshkol is a regional council. Um, it's uh, 32 communities, very Zionist communities that are lies along the border with Egypt and Gaza. Out of uh, 60 kilometers of the border with uh, Gaza, Eshkol share 40 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have kibbutzim, we have moshavim, a uh, very agricultural community. What's the most well-known community in your region? It's a great question. I don't think there is. Uh, Sderot is the famous town nearby, uh, but we are a small communities, kibbutzim, moshavim, uh, modest people. Uh, we don't see ourselves as uh, heroes or as people that you should feel sorry for. We just, we love the land, we love Israel. We want to raise our children in this beautiful these beautiful communities that we live in. This week, 13 years ago, Israel withdrew the Gazan, Gazan Jewish communities uh, from uh, Gush Katif area. How many of them have gone to live in your region? Uh, we have one, uh, three of our uh, 32 communities are communities that were created after leaving Gush Katif. Uh, it's amazing people that could decide to live somewhere else, but uh, they chose, chose the next uh, challenge of Israel and they said Israel needs us and Israel needs us here. And despite the, the huge crisis that they went through, you know, actually Israel sent them there and suddenly Israel is telling them now you have to leave. They didn't give up. And, and amazing people. Where, where did you live then in 2005? I was there. I was, um, I was born in Sinai in 1977. In 82, my family, just like the people of Gush Katif, had to leave our home and to rebuild. And my parents uh, were the pioneers who built a new community, Ein Abso, when where I live now. And since the age of five, I live in Ein Abso. Um, and yes, in, during the disengagement from uh, Gaza, I was there. Uh, I thought it was the right thing to do. I couldn't understand how people live uh, in Gush Katif. How can you live uh, under a constant threat? A uh, terror attack uh, follows another terror attack. I couldn't understand how people can raise their children in such conditions. Um, I became a mother in 2004. In 2005, the disengagement came and I became Gush Katif. In uh, 2006, my two boys were born. Uh, it was uh, the Second Lebanon War. Uh, Hamas was shooting, launching hundreds of rockets toward our community. And I realized that I am now the Gush Katif. And people keep asking themselves, how could I live there? How could I raise my children in, in, under such conditions? And, and my answer is, uh, this is my home. Uh, we are not a territory in dispute. This is Israel. This is 1948 land of Israel. This is partition plan. This is where we live, on the Israeli side. And despite the disengagement, despite the people of Gush Katif that left their homes and left great infrastructures, and the Americans that invested uh, millions of dollars in hothouses in Gush Katif, they could take it, Hamas, and they could flourish and invest in industry, in education. They chose not to. And now we are the next goal. The next uh, objective for them? Yes. To drive you back? I think so. Uh, they are saying it loud and clear. Uh, since they realize also that uh, the Iron Dome system is very efficient and their long-range rockets are uh, mm -hmm. uh, not effective anymore, they are saying loud and clear, we are investing right now in short-range rockets that are much more massive and destructive, mm -hmm. and we are going to target your communities. Mm -hmm. So when you were in favor of the disengagement in 2005, but now 13 years later, now you're a target mm -hmm. of Israel's withdrawing the IDF from Gaza, would now with 13 years experience, would you want Israel to go back? and protect you from inside Gaza the way they do from the West Bank? I don't want Israel to go back for good to Gaza, no. Not forever. I think something has to be done to make it stop. Uh, um, I know that there isn't an easy answer. Uh, it's not that we have a partner over there. Um, it's not that if we will have an operation, we will create a partner over there. 
Uh, I think the only solution is that the uh, Palestinians in Gaza will stop looking at them as victims and will take responsibility and and create their own revolution and take the Hamas out. Hamas, as much as I suffer from the Hamas, they suffer from the Hamas much more than I do. At least I have a democratic uh, a country, I have shelters, uh, I'm a woman in a modern country. Uh, they don't. No one built shelters for them and they have a lot of cement. We bring them cement. They use cement for tunnels. The, you know, the, their, their leadership even exploded the border cross with, the, uh, with Israel so we won't bring merchandise into uh, Gaza so they will show humanitarian crisis. Uh, there is no easy answer and uh, uh, I'm, I have to say to admit that I'm grateful that I'm not the Prime Minister and I don't need to make the tough decisions. But I do demand that my government will do everything they can so I will be safe and my children will be safe. When people criticize Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, as, uh, for many reasons, how do you feel if you were in his situation? First of all, people criticize administrations, uh, period. Look what you have here in the uh, in United States. Uh, but this is the democratic system. Uh, my democratic system led to the fact that right now I have a prime minister, which is Benjamin Netanyahu, and a coalition around it. Uh, and even if it's not my, uh, uh, my ideology, I need to respect that, the fact that the majority in my country led in the democratic Sorry. six. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not that they chose, the, the majority didn't choose Benjamin Netanyahu, but the democratic system is... A system that led to it, just like you have here. Your democratic system, and some will say uh, that he didn't want the majority. Mm -hmm. Your democratic system led to this decision that he is your president. And you have to respect it. Yes. Um, with regard to Sinai, withdrawal from Sinai, was it worth it? To Sinai? A peace, a cold peace from Egypt in exchange. First of all, I have to thank you for this question because uh, a, a thing that is not being said in the media right now is the war that is happening in Sinai right now next to our houses. ISIS? ISIS fighting the Egyptian army. Our communities go to sleep night and day with uh, explosions. For the children, it doesn't matter that, oh, it's ISIS against the Egyptian army, it's not Gaza. They don't care. This is the reality that they live through. If you're asking me if it was worth it, the answer is yes. Uh, just like you heard a moment ago, uh, someone who had to leave his house in Gush Katif, and, uh, and uh, was it worth it? The answer is no. Would we do it again? I think we would because we are a people the Jewish people want peace. Uh, we use the word peace, shalom, as a figure of speech in so many uh, moments in our life. Shabbat shalom, and shalom as a hello, and, uh, and rodef shalom, and because this is what we want. I don't want my children to be soldiers. I know that they will, but I don't want them to be soldiers. And in a country that uh, has to send his, uh, its children to, to the army, I can't believe that such a country would want war. We all want peace. We all want our children safe uh, with no wars. Uh -huh. but, well, if, but if we have to do it, we will do it. Uh -huh. But after 13 years, what have the Palestinians demonstrated that they want? What did they demonstrate that they Especially want? from Gaza. Have they, have they shown they're interested in peace or are they interested in conquest? Uh, the Hamas have shown that they don't want anything but war, mm -hmm. escalation, mm -hmm. Uh, um, terror. Uh, they had so many opportunities uh, um, to calm things down, to invest in their own uh, infrastructures, in their own society. You know, when uh, the Hamas took control, the first thing that they did was to murder the Fatah people, to throw them from the rooftops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this a way to, uh, um, to lead your people? Mm -hmm. Not in my opinion. 
I'm sorry for the Palestinians that they are being terrorized every day by the, by the Hamas. Uh, would a Palestinian state in Gaza, would, would you, if it could be uh, implemented, uh, do you think it would bring safety to your region? I think that when the Palestinian will have a state, a democratic state, it will be the best Arab country in the world because they have an amazing country next to them uh, and they can learn so much from it, they choose not to. Uh, if they will open up to the new ideas about uh, the, um, uh, about how life are precious, about uh, investing in agriculture, how they can uh, um, recycle water and invest in agriculture, uh, different ways of educating their kids. If they will put their energies there, they will be the best Muslim country in the world. Mm -hmm. But if they're an Islamist culture, mm -hmm. whose goal is to reclaim, recapture, the land that, the, that they feel that the Jews stole from them, would you, would you ever have one day of peace? No, uh, but if they will recognize our right to exist, I recognize the right to exist. I don't think I should control them. I don't want to control them. I want them to have their own sovereignty. They should just accept my own right to.